Hello everyone, this is part two of my ant weight build for Sergeant Cuddles. In the previous video we talked about the overall design of the robot, but in this video we're going to talk specifically about the weapon system. When you design a combat robot, there's a lot of different design considerations that you can have. You can do more of a defensive thing, like a wedge or possibly a flipper, or you can do something more offensive, like a drum or a spinning bar, maybe even a shell spinner. There's a lot of classic designs out there, and the rotating drum is a really nice design. And I decided to go with this uh, mainly because my friend Casey does a 60-pound lightweight drum. And I just kind of copied some of the designs and some of the stuff I knew from him. The other thing I like is that there's a lot of mass up in this thing, and when it gets spinning, it sounds really scary, and when it hits against something, it can send it flying. So uh, let's just kind of take apart the drum and show you what's going on in this front section of Sergeant Cuddles. The drum is made out of 6061 aluminum, and I turned this on my lathe. It started out as like a one and a half inch diameter piece of aluminum. I first turned it down, then kind of got it roughly to size, and I'll show you the insides of this later, but this thing is actually mostly hollow with the motor fitting inside and the shaft coming through here. You can also see that I've got two screws here and two screws there. These are ultimately the things that hit the opponent. They stick out just a little bit, and they are what comes into contact with whatever is coming up against this. And you can see that they have quite a bit of damage on them from just knocking into things. And there's two flats that I machined on the drum to accommodate these bolt heads, and they just barely hit the ground. If all the weight is up front, they hit, and when it sits flat, it allows the drum to just barely spin. The thing that I did was I added these little screws on the back and they can be adjusted in and out and that can control the height of the drum in the front. So I can adjust these to where they just barely sit up enough to where the drum doesn't hit on the ground and if I adjust them down just a little bit the drum will hit against the floor. The drum is held in place by three screws at this end and then the shaft, which is actually a screw at this end. So I'm going to take these screws out and this thing should pop out. The wires for the motor actually run through here, so I'll have to take off this back plate to disconnect those as well, and that should allow the drum to get free. The shaft is actually a um, 5 16 inch screw. The main bearing for this drum is a skate bearing, and that is roughly the diameter. So just using a screw as the shaft for the fixed end of it over here turned out pretty good. So yeah, that is just the shaft that goes through it. So now it's free. Um, I just need to get the wiring harness out of here, and the whole thing can pull out. All of these screws are just kind of threaded into the UHMW chassis. Um, I underdrilled the size of the hole, you know, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so, and um, then just using a longer screw, I just screwed it slowly down into the whole thing, and it ended up creating some threads, and these hold pretty well. I didn't have any issues with these pulling out. Now this is free. There's not a lot of extra play in here. You can see that there's a couple like really thin washers on this side in between um, the shaft and the bearing. So thankfully this chassis is a little bit flexible, so I have to kind of flex it a little bit to um, get this out. You can see that this um, skate bearing just kind of nestles inside this end like that and then we have the shaft over here that just kind of sits like that and there's very little if any play in that on the other side we have an outrunner motor i think this is like a 130 watt motor 
and it just sets inside. So this just kind of snaps in place like that. And so we can just pull it right off. And then this can pull right out. And there you go. That's the outrunner motor that sits inside the drum. It um, is just a pretty tight press fit inside of there. And um, you can see that from the SOLIDWORKS drawing, the motor sits there and the shaft sits there. So there's really not a whole lot of room left after you take into account how much the screws are sitting in there as well. Little note about these motors, both the um, inrunners and outrunners actually. When using these motors for a spinning weapon like a drum or even a bar or something like that, the thing that you want to keep in mind is the KV rating. The KV rating is essentially the RPM per volt. So this motor has an 1100 KV rating, meaning that it's 1100 RPM per volt that goes in it. I'm using a three cell LiPo system, which is three times 3.7 or 4.2, whether it be the standard voltage or charge voltage. So it's roughly about 12 volts. And so 12 times 1100, it's roughly about 12,000 RPM at full bore. So the likelihood of something coming into this and then actually getting hit by one of these bolts is relatively low because it's moving so fast. You want this moving a little bit slower, somewhere in the sub 10,000, maybe five to 8,000 RPM, and that gives it enough time to actually come around and hit the thing because otherwise it's just kind of a blur and everything's moving way too fast. And I learned that I had to slow the motor down quite a bit um, on my speed controller. It was just going way too fast and it would never really make contact with anything. And there you have it. That is the weapon for Sergeant Cuddles, as with the design and everything else. So part three, we're going to talk about the electronic system and all the controls and all the electronics that go into powering the Soul Combat Robot.